Hey y'all, in today's video, I wanna show you how to animate your logo inside of After Effects. We're gonna take this logo and animate it to look like this. But first, we need to prep this image and split it into its separate pieces so that we can then work on it in After Effects. And to do this, we're gonna to need to use Photoshop. So let's jump on it. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere. And basically what we wanna do is just split it up into its separate components that make up the entire animation. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna crop perspective. And then I'm gonna save that out. And we're gonna save this as a PNG file, that way the background is transparent. And I'm gonna call this perspective. That is if I can spell. Okay, now once I've got that, then I'm gonna hit Command Z or, or Control Z if you're on a, um, a Windows computer. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with media. So I'm gonna hit C for crop. Try to make sure it's centered up. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Again, as a PNG so that the background is transparent. I'll call that media. And then I'm gonna undo that. And now let's crop the M. pretty good but I also have to get rid of this as well so I'm just gonna erase it Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna save that. And I'm just gonna call it M. And I'm just gonna keep hitting undo till I get back to where I was. And so the last thing we need is actually this part in the middle here. So let's see if we can select that. I think what I'm gonna do is use my quick select tool Now that I've got this selected, I'm gonna select the inverse, and I do that by hitting Command or Control, Shift, I, and that selects everything else. And I'm just gonna hit Delete. Now we're just left with this, and then I'm gonna crop that. And it looks pretty good. And I'm gonna save this as, what do I wanna save this as? We'll just call this, uh, lens aperture. Sure, why not? All right, that's it for Photoshop. So I'm going to close it out and I'm going to go ahead and open up After Effects. I'm going to go ahead and bring in all my PNG files. I'm also going to be using this, the main one that shows the entire logo, um, as a reference to help line things up when I need it. So I'm going to command click on everything here and just drag it in to the project. Then I'm gonna create a new composition. And the first thing I'm gonna work on is the M portion of this. So I'm just gonna call this M, but you can call it whatever you want. And this is where you have all your uh, settings. So for me, I use 3840 by 2160. That's normally how I shoot video. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, frame rate 29.97. That's also how I normally export my videos. So I'm going to leave it at that. And then duration is, I'm just gonna make this 10 seconds uh, for now. If you wanted to make it shorter, you could just type in like 500 and that would be uh, five seconds. Uh, but again, I'm just gonna make this 10 seconds long and then hit okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is drop in my reference 
file and I'm going to align this with the composition to make sure it's centered up. And if you don't see this uh, tab, what you want to do is go over to window and click on align. And now you can see it's gone and we'll bring it back. So with this clicked on, we want to align it horizontally in the middle and also vertically. So now we're going to bring in our M and we just want to match it up with this. Um, the way you can zoom in and out is with your mouse scroll wheel. You can just zoom in and zoom out with your mouse scroll wheel. And if you want to drag your composition around, you're going to hold your space bar and then just click and drag around. So now let's go ahead and line up the M. And now if I'm getting close, I can use my arrows to refine it. And then what I'm going to do is, these are my layers over here, so I'm just going to um, show and hide to see that we look lined up and it looks good. So now I'm going to hide this reference layer and now we can start working on our M. And what I did for this was create a reveal for it. So the way we're going to do that is make sure we've clicked on that layer and we're going to grab our pen tool and we're going to start drawing a line all the way around this M. And the more points that you add, the better. Uh, it'll give you more flexibility to make adjustments later. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I'm going to click and drag this to go along with the curve. And once I've got that where I want it, I'm going to option click the end and bring it back closer to there. Click and drag again. Option click or alt click if you're on Windows. Click and drag. And now we've got a path going all the way around the M. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to add an effect. And again, if you don't see anything that we're trying to use here over here, you want to click on Window and click on Effects just to make sure it's showing as active. And we're going to grab our Stroke effect. And we're going to drag that onto the layer. And now it shows up in here under Effects Controls. And we're going to change the color of this to red so it's a little more obvious, we can see it better. And we're going to change the brush size. And what we want to do is fill this up so that it's completely covering the M. So you want to drag this entirely out until it's covering the M. And we're pretty close right there. Um, I just see a couple of areas where it's, where the M is peeking through. So I'm just going to see if I can refine this a little bit. right here on the bottom and up here at the top. All right, now that we've got it entirely covered, what we want to do is change the paint style to reveal original image. And what that does is now change this to reveal the image. Now what we want to do is start keyframing that. So I don't want this to start right at zero. I think I want to have it start close to one second, but again, this is something you can play around with and experiment with. And we want to start, obviously, where it's not showing, and then we're going to keyframe it by hitting this stopwatch. And so what that's done, if we open this up right here, you can see under Effects, Stroke, it has created a keyframe right there on the bottom. And now what we want to do is move ahead, maybe about a second or so, and if we just change this value, it's going to automatically create another keyframe. So let's move it all the way to 100%. And now we've got another keyframe down here. So basically, we've already made an animation. So let's watch that and see what it looks like. Perfect. So what I just do is I drag this back, the playhead back to the beginning, and I hit spacebar, and that'll play. All right. So 
yeah, it looks really good. Um, and there's definitely things that we can do to enhance this a little bit. So one of those things being is that we can ease the keyframing to make it look a little more natural. So I'm gonna select both of these and right click under Keyframe Assistant and click on Easy Ease. And what, that do, what that'll do, it'll make it so it's not just so such a linear move, it'll make it a little more natural looking. So let's take a look at that. Awesome, looks pretty good. And we can actually even take this even another step. Um, if we just, again, highlight these and we can go over to this little tab right here, this is the graph editor. And so this is the arc that it's traveling in. Um, and if we wanna change that, so that it moves faster maybe in the beginning and slower at the end or the reverse we can just drag these handles out so we're going to click and drag this handle out and what that's going to do is it's going to speed it up in the beginning and slow it down at the end so let's see what that looks like looks good it might be a little bit too slow at the end so i'm going to drag this back just a little bit this is something that you'll just kind of have to experiment with I like it. So I'm gonna click off this graph editor and I think that we're pretty much good to go with the M animation. Um, so what I'm gonna do is click on this now and I'm gonna hit U and I'm gonna hit U again. And now basically that's just collapsing the layer. It's not changing anything, it's just changing our view. So the next thing we wanna work on is, go back to project, is the um, lens aperture. So let's go ahead and drag that into the project and now we want to check our reference PNG again to make sure that we're lined up. And let's go ahead and move this closer. We'll zoom in a bit. And we'll start using our arrow keys to move it up and over. See if we can line it up. And that looks pretty good. Let's toggle on, on and off our reference uh, layer. And I think we're good to go. All right, so I'm going to leave the reference layer off. And now we're gonna start working on this lens aperture animation. So what I did for this is I had it zoom in and I also had it rotate and I also changed the opacity. So it, the opacity was basically, it's, it's invisible when it starts and it ends up being completely visible at the end of the animation. So let's see how we wanna approach that. So trying to figure out now where I actually want it to end. And I think, let's say, basically right when this ends is where I want this animation to end as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this to show our effects tab, our transform tab. And what I wanna animate is the scale, the rotation, and the opacity. And by hitting the stopwatch, I'm adding a keyframe for all those. And now let's go back maybe a second and then change the values. So the scale, I'm gonna change the value to, I don't know, let's say, you know, 400%, somewhere around there. And then the rotation, I'm going to, let's say 10 rotations. And the opacity is gonna drop that down to zero. So let's see what that looks like. Hit spacebar to play it. Not bad. Cool. Again, we can kind of spice this up a little bit by easing the keyframe. So I don't think we need to do that for the opacity, but what we can do it for is the scale and the rotation. So I'm gonna highlight those. I'm gonna to go to my graph editor. Oh, first thing I need to do is highlight them and right click Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. And then I'm gonna to go to my graph editor. And I'm gonna move them a little bit. And let's try that out and see what that looks like. Looks pretty good. I think I'm actually gonna have the rotation go on just a little bit longer than the scale. And let's see what that looks like. 
I think it looks pretty good. So something else that we can do to make this look a little bit more natural is that we can add motion blur that's built into After Effects by clicking on this little button right here, which enables motion blur. And then we also need to click it for this layer. And so let's see what that looks like. And you can already see when we're in the middle of the animation, this is what the motion blur looks like when you add it. So let's take it off for a second and add it back on. So that really adds quite a bit to the believability of this motion. Cool. And I'm gonna drag this out even farther. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pre-compose our current animation. And so what I do is just I select everything and right click and hit pre-compose and hit okay. And then what I'm gonna do is make a new composition and I'm gonna call this final animation. And it's still got all the same settings as before so I'm just gonna hit okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our pre-comp that we just worked on and into this new composition. And I'm going to align it. And so the reason for doing this, uh, pre-composing that is so now that entire animation that we came up with is basically collapse into its own layer so that we can move it around. If I want to put that M here and have that entire animation go only in the corner, um, it'll work. I don't have to move it piece by piece. So let's go ahead and put it back. And I think what I want to do is actually animate this entire thing by having it slide in from the top. So let's try that out. So when it gets to right here, it should be basically done. So we're gonna click on transform. And for this one, we're gonna hit the stopwatch on position. And we've created a keyframe there. And let's go back a second. And let's move the position out of the frame. And see what that looks like. Same kind of thing though, you know, it looks very static um, and a little bit boring. So right, right click, sorry, select everything, right click, keyframe assistant and easy ease. And I actually think I want this to move a little bit quicker. So I'm just gonna bring them a little close together. And then I'm gonna use my graph editor to make it, to move this over just a little bit. And we'll see what that looks like. Cool. Maybe bring this out just a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Nice. And then again, we can add a motion blur so this looks a little more realistic. So click on this to enable motion blur and then click down here to enable motion blur. And as you can see, once you do that, the M starts to have this sort of natural look to it. So if I unclick it and then click it, it looks a little more natural. Awesome. So now all we have left is to add media and perspective. And I'm going to bring in my reference photo and align it. And then bring in perspective. And Line that up. Bring in media. I'm basically done with this reference photo now because I don't have anything else to bring into the project. So I'm just gonna delete it from this comp. And now what we're going to do is we're going to animate perspective and media. And I basically am doing the same thing as I did with the lens aperture, which is just change the opacity and 
zoom it in. Um, I'm just not doing a rotation on it, so it's it's going to be very similar. So let's say we just it's just a matter of where we want to place those keyframes. So let's start with perspective. Click on transform, and we're going to do scale and opacity. Go back a second, and we're going to scale it up. Honestly, you could pick whatever number you want. Let's say 400 again, and then drop the opacity and sort of see what that looks like. Looks pretty good. I think I'm going to move this out just a little bit so it's a little bit later than the M. Pretty good. And then we're going to do the same thing with media. And I'm basically going to copy this same thing, but I'm going to just do it slightly later. So scale and opacity. And then scale, I guess we're sticking with 400. And dropping opacity. And now let's see what that looks like. Pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is same thing with all of these is keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then the graph editor. And then we're also going to enable motion blur with these. And I think we've done a good job at recreating this animation. Awesome. So the last step would be just to export everything. So I'm going to select everything, hit U, collapse everything. And on export, what you want to do is go to File, Add to Render Queue. And if we want to re render this on black, then we would just leave it as is. But if we want to make this so that it's transparent, maybe you have uh, another piece of footage that you want to have uh, behind your logo, um, what you'll want to do is click off of this so that you now just see everything on a transparent. And then when you go to your render, you want to go to click on the output module, and under Format Options, you want to select Animation and hit OK. And you're going to want to click on Video Output, RGB, and Alpha. That's going to, the Alpha channel is what's allowing it to be transparent. And then you're just going to click here and choose where you want to output to and hit Render, and you're all set. So that's it for this one. There are a million ways to create awesome animations inside of After Effects, and honestly, this really just scratches the surface for what it can do. Um, it's an unbelievably powerful tool, and there are just a ton of tutorials online to help you get started. And speaking of tutorials, we put out one every week on here, so please like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out one of our other tutorials here. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.